Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. Today I'm answering questions from Google about technical diving, starting with the key phrase technical scuba and basically seeing what questions come up on the first page of Google. What is technical diving? Technical diving can be quite a vague term and vary in definition depending on who you're talking to. In the broadest of terms, tech diving is just more advanced scuba diving that tends to go deeper uh, or longer or further or a combination of all three. 40 meters of depth seems to be the most constant or consistent limit where anything shallower is considered recreational diving and diving deeper than 40 meters is considered technical diving. That's kind of the recreational limit. But it's not all about depth or just wearing the color black. Uh, technical divers are typically a bit more disciplined uh, and knowledgeable about what's actually happening to their body at certain depths during the dive, breathing different gases and uh, gas mixes and completing decompression dives where you can't just ascend straight up to the surface you need to complete a stop at a certain point or if you're diving in an overhead environment as well while the exact definition of technical diving can be quite vague it tends to refer to just more advanced scuba diving so that you can dive deeper longer or further why do people do technical diving Again, this can vary. Uh, the usual answers are to basically go somewhere that nobody else or very few people have ever been to and to explore places that few others can even reach. So it's, it's nice and quiet down there. But technical diving is just an extension of scuba diving to just push boundaries even further. But it's also better for all of your diving as well. Technical diving takes you into a deeper understanding of what happens to your body at greater depths and even at shallow depths really and how you can adjust your dive profile without having to just blindly follow your dive computer. It's not all about going down as deep as you possibly can. It, it can help you dive more safely in shallower waters but it can also teach you to reach like deeper shipwrecks uh, if there's a certain deep shipwreck that's outside of recreational limits. Um, you can spend a bit more time on those, uh, explore more compartments safely. Uh, for some divers, it's about exploring caves and you need the appropriate equipment and the skills to accommodate that. For me, it was just a better understanding of what was happening to my body and go diving more safely, but it is gonna be different for each diver. What do tech divers breathe? Whatever they need to to get back to the surface safely. But it's usually a combination um, of gases with varying amounts of oxygen and helium. Uh, normal air is quite a decent gas to breathe, but it does have its limits. It also has quite a lot of nitrogen inside of it, um, which causes our need for decompression at the end of a dive. By adding oxygen to that, it helps us reduce that need for decompression, but now we can't go down as deep because oxygen becomes toxic at depth. So we then use helium to reduce the nitrogen while keeping that oxygen. To dive deeper, you of course need to reduce that oxygen by adding more helium that gets rid of both the nitrogen and the oxygen. Uh, you then of course can't use that gas in shallow waters because now there isn't enough oxygen when you're at shallower waters at that pressure. So for certain dives, you'll often see technical divers with multiple cylinders with different gas mixes in each of them that you can swap between at different parts of the dive. You'll have an oxygen rich gas for shallow water at the end of the dive, a travel gas so that you can get down deeper, and then a bottom gas which is only for the deepest portion of the dive, and then you just swap to the most uh, appropriate gas at whatever depth. How many types of diving are there? It really depends how you want to break it down, uh, and it can range from two, um, being scuba diving or free diving. I mean, I suppose three because you have surface feed as well. Um, it can range anywhere from like three to seven or probably even more thinking about it. If you really break it down, there's uh, snorkeling and apnea 
um, apnea being the more extreme discipline of snorkeling um, because you don't have any other gear, you're holding your breath and swimming under the water. With scuba, you can break that down into diving single cylinders, twin cylinders, um, both of those back mounted. Uh, you then get side mount as well, rebreather. Uh, you do have surface supply uh, where you have a compressor or something on the surface that feeds the gas down to you via a hose, some kind of umbilical. But you can keep going by splitting rebreather into closed circuit and semi closed circuit. Um, we have monkey diving as well, where you basically only bring a cylinder and a regulator uh, on the dive. That's basically it, no, no BCD or anything. Sometimes you get a harness that you clip it to, others you literally just hug the cylinder so you're as minimal as possible. You could argue that full face mask is a, a unique discipline for scuba diving. As with so many things in life, there are a great many types of diving that you can either boil down to just two or three, diving with cylinders or not, or you can expand it to each individual equipment configuration or diving environment. You could expand the list to include wreck diving, ice diving, drift diving, all those kind of things. Uh, then it really does become countless. Do your lungs shrink when you dive? Not Technically, if you do that word precision, uh, your actual lungs, the bodily tissue, that's not going to change size, but the gas inside them will. As you dive deeper, the pressure of the water around you and above you will increase and most of your body won't compress because your bodily tissue is a lot of its water, water can't compress, but the air spaces will. It's why you need to equalize your ears because there's a small air space inside here that just like the gas inside of your lungs will start to compress at depth and you need to add some extra air volume to that space to equalize that pressure. It's the same reason why your breathing amount increases at depth. You breathe more gas the deeper down you are because it takes literally more and more gas molecules to fill up your lungs with every breath because all of those molecules are more tightly packed together because of the pressure around it. If you hold your breath, on the surface and then you swim downwards then yes the volume of the gas inside of your lungs is going to become smaller and it will increase as you start to ascend and that is why our number one rule while scuba diving is to never hold your breath and ascend because you're breathing in more molecules at depth and then as you ascend they're going to want to expand and that is going to damage your lungs. If you have any scuba diving questions that you would like answered, let me know down in the comments below. And if you use the Ask Mark hashtag, it might get featured in next week's Q&A. That's it for another week. Thank you so very much for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.